just standing out here in the cool of the evening after a good warm sun-filled day and thinking about Moses when he said he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High and I just think that that statement is so pregnant with significance and meaning. He's talking about the, the secret place of the Most High. The secret place of the Most High. Now, we know that uh, Moses was a man of prayer. He certainly uh, was in that tent for extended periods of time, and then he was up on the mount. And Joshua was with him for many of these events. And Joshua probably looked at him and saw him and maybe even heard of him or heard him or whatever he was doing, praying or, or meditating. Uh, we don't have those details. <clears throat> but that word secret. And it comes to me that when you are in worship, for instance, in a spirit-filled Pentecostal environment and other environments as well, but you know when you're when you're worshiping, you may have your your hands lifted and your your eyes turned to the Lord, and in those moments of of a, it's really connection between you and God and. You are worshiping him, attributing to him the attributes of deity. Lord, you're, you're beautiful, you're wonderful, you're glorious, you're the king of kings, the Lord. You know, and you're, you're worshiping him those ways and so on. You know, it's just you and him. Just you and him. Now, Joshua can be listening but you know, he's not part of what's happening here. Why? Because it's a secret place. It doesn't mean that uh, you know nobody knows where you're hiding out to pray or worship or, or something like that. They know you're in the tent or in your closet or in your prayer room or uh, a recent movie came out, it was the war room. Well, you know, People can know you're there, so it's not secret in that way. It is secret because what's transpiring is just between you and God. It can be in prayer, it can be in intercession, it can be in praise, it can be in worship, it can be in song, it can be in meditation. But you know, it's just between you and God. Now, Joshua could have had his own secret place into which Moses could not enter. And recently I was uh, watching a, um, a uh, video and I was just looking at the people in worship. Some had their hands raised, some had their, hand, their, their heads bowed and so on, but there must have been several hundred of people uh, hundreds of people there, each one having their own secret place of worship, of prayer, of whatever was going on. <laughs> you don't know what's going on in those secret places, but our God, uh, as Jesus said, in my Father's house are many uh, dwelling places or many English phrases uh, mansions it, it has more to do with a dwelling place you know he has a lot of them in fact he's got one specially for you and for me and each individual and it's just mind-boggling and incredible that God can have a secret place where he gives himself holy to, to, to the one with whom he's meeting in this secret place. But he can do that for every 
other of them at the same time. Only God can do that. And that's the greatness of our God. And so I have a, I have a yearning, I have a desire just to go into the secret place. And yes, when I do that, I, I like to be private. I don't want somebody watching me necessarily. But you know, when you're in the crowd and everybody's worshiping, they're not, they're not looking at you. They're looking at him. And in that atmosphere, you can express, you can pray, you can sing, you can worship. It's just such a beautiful thing. And so I say, thank you, Moses, for writing that he that dwelleth, Oh my God, is that possible? He that dwelleth in that secret place of the Most High, something shall happen, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And that's another story by itself. But today, just you and him, some express are going to your closet and so on. Your father who See it in secret. Oh yes. Let's go into the secret place. Thanks for listening. God bless you. My name is Roy and I'm your friend. I'll be happy. Goodbye.